Hello students, today we will be studying the gross anatomical features of the ovaries and the fallopian tubes. Now what we see here are components of the female reproductive system and we can identify here on the related to the posterior surface of the uterus and posterior superior surface of the broad ligament we can see the ovary. Now ovary is a pair of female reproductive gonads situated in the lesser pelvis one on either side of the uterus attached to the posterior layer of the broad ligament below and behind the corresponding uterine tube. It is an intraperitoneal organ. When we talk of shape of the ovary, it is almond shaped. The measurements of the ovary, it measures vertically 3 cm. Anteroposteriorly or the thickness is 1.5 cm and transversely it measures about 1 cm. The weight of the ovary is approximately 4 to 8 grams. When we talk of the color of the ovary, it is dull gray in color. The appearance of the ovary before puberty, its surface is smooth. Repeated ovulation and cicatrization makes the surface irregular and puckered. What is the position of the ovary? In a nulliparous woman, the ovary lies in the ovarian fossa below the pelvic brim. In a newborn, it lies above the pelvic brim and repeated pregnancies may prolapse the ovaries into the rectouterine pouch of Douglas. What is the axis of the ovary? It lies vertically the tubal end directed towards the external iliac vein and the uterine end directed towards the pelvic floor. What are the presenting parts of the ovaries? Two ends, two borders and two surfaces. Now the two ends, this is the tubal end and this is the uterine end. Two borders, a mesovarian border and a free border and two surfaces, the medial surface and the lateral surface. The tubal end or the lateral end is directed upwards and is related to the uterine tubes. It also shows attachment of the ovarian fimbria. Suspensory ligament of ovary connects the uterine tube and the ovary to the pelvic brim. The uterine end of the ovary is directed downwards, is connected to the lateral angle of the uterus or is connected to the cornua of the uterus by the ligament of ovary. The mesovarian or the anterior border, this is attached to the posterosuperior layer of the broad ligament by a fold which acts as the hilum of the ovary and conveys the ovarian vessels and the nerves and this is nothing but the mesovarium. A clear picture of that is seen here. This is the ovary, the tubal end related to the fimbriated end of the fallopian tube, the uterine end and this here what we see is the mesovarium which is a bilaminar fold connecting the mesovarian border of the ovary to the posterosuperior surface of the broad ligament. The free or the posterior border of the ovary is convex and is related to the uterine tube in the upper part. More posteriorly, it is related to the ureter and the internal iliac vessels beneath the peritoneum. The medial surface is related to the terminal part of the uterine tube. The lateral surface is convex and rests on a peritoneal depression of the lateral pelvic wall which is called as the ovarian fossa. 
This ovarian fossa is bounded anteroperiorly by the obliterated umbilical artery, superiorly by the external iliac vein, and posteriorly by the ureter and the internal iliac vessels. Laterally, or the floor of the fossa is formed by the parietal peritoneum, obturator nerve, and vessels. Now let us see the arterial supply of the ovary. This is done by the ovarian artery, which is a branch of the abdominal aorta. It reaches the organ by passing through the suspensory ligament of the ovary, the mesosalpings, and the mesovarium of the broad ligament. Ovary is also supplied by a branch from the uterine artery. Venous drainage: veins form a pampaniform plexus, which joins to form a single vein in the suspensory ligament of the ovary. The right ovarian vein drains into the inferior vena cava at an acute angle. The left ovarian vein drains into the left renal vein at a right angle. Lymphatic drainage of the ovary goes into the pre-aortic and lateral aortic lymph nodes following the ovarian blood vessels. The nerve supply of the ovaries are predominantly done by sympathetic nerves. The preganglionic fibers being derived from T10 and T11 spinal segments. Thus, we have seen the features of the ovaries. Now, let us study the uterine tubes, also known as the oviducts or the fallopian tubes. These are a pair of ducts which convey the ova from the ovary to the uterine cavity. The length of each fallopian tube is about 10 cm or 4 inches. Where is it situated? It lies in the medial 3 fourths of the upper free border of the broad ligament of the uterus. What is the course of the fallopian tube? From the angle of the uterus or the cornua of the uterus, the tube passes laterally up to the uterine end of the ovary. Then it passes upwards along the mesovarian border of the ovary, arches backwards and that is around the tubal end of the ovary and then it turns downwards and comes in contact with the posterior border and the medial surface of the ovary. So, we see it first travelling laterally, then going upwards, arching over the tubal end of the ovary and then ending on its medial surface. So, laterally, upwards, arching backwards and then downwards. What are the presenting parts of the fallopian tube? It has two openings and four parts. Two openings are the uterine opening and the lateral or infundibular opening. The uterine opening is 1 millimeter in diameter and communicates the intramural part of the uterine tube with the lateral angle of the uterine cavity. The pelvic or the abdominal opening lies at the lateral end of the uterine tube at the bottom of the infundibulum where it pierces the posterior layer of the broad ligament and hence the peritoneal cavity in females is an open sac. This opening is about 3 mm in diameter and its margins show finger-like processes which are called as fimbria. This end is also known as the fimbriated end. Now let us see the parts of the fallopian tube. The four parts from medial to lateral are the intramural part, the isthmus, the ampulla and the infundibulum. The intramural part measures about 1 cm long, traverses the musculature of the uterus at the junction of the fundus and body of uterus. Next is the isthmus which measures about 3 cm in length. This is long, rounded, narrow and cord-like due to the thick musculature. 
द थर्ड पार्ट इज दी एम्प्यूला इस मेजर्स अबाउट फाइव सेंटीमीटर्स इन लेंथ इट इज थिन वॉल्ड डायलेटेड एंड टॉर्चर्स एंड दिस इज द नॉर्मल साइट ऑफ फर्टिलाइजेशन ऑफ द ओवम लैटरल मोस्ट इज द एक्सपैंडेड ट्रम्पेट लाइक पार्ट वन सेंटीमीटर लॉन्ग द बॉटम ऑफ द इनफंडिबुलम शोज द पेल्विक ओपनिंग विथ द फिम्ब्रिया वन सच फिम्ब्रिया इज लॉन्गर दैन द अदर्स एंड इज अटैच टू द अपर एंड ऑफ द ओवरी एंड इज कॉल्ड द ओवेरियन फिम्ब्रिया वॉट आर द रिलेशन ऑफ द यूट्राइन ट्यूब विद इन द ब्रॉड लिगमेंट बिलो और इंफीरियरली द यूट्राइन ट्यूब इज रिलेटेड टू द एनास्टमोसिस of the ovarian and uterine vessels below and in front it is related to the round ligament of the uterus while below and behind it is related to the ligament of the ovary with the ovary uterine tube surrounds the ovary in front above and partly behind and partly on the medial surface now let us see what is the arterial supply of the fallopian tube this is done by the ovarian artery which is a direct branch of the abdominal aorta and the uterine artery which is a branch of the anterior division of internal iliac artery both these arteries anastomose close to the angle of the uterus venous drainage is done by ovarian and uterine veins uterine veins draining into the internal iliac vein right ovarian vein draining into the inferior vena cava and the left ovarian vein draining into the left renal vein lymphatic drainage most of the fallopian tube drains into the pre aortic and lateral aortic lymph nodes following the ovarian vessels the intramural part drains into the superficial inguinal lymph nodes following the round ligament of the uterus the nerve supply of the fallopian tube sympathetic supply is from the ovarian and superior hypogastric plexuses where the preganglionic fibers are coming from t10 to l2 spinal segments while the parasympathetic fibers for the medial part of the tube are coming from the pelvic splanchnic nerves and for the lateral part they come from the vagus nerves thus we have seen the gross anatomical features of the ovary and the fallopian tube thank you